Welcome back to BT. Emergency room visits for wasps and bee stings are on the rise right now in Calgary. Here to help us understand the difference between wasp and bee stings and what to do about them is acute care physician Dr. Raj Bardwaj. Good morning to you. Good morning, Leo. So it is a busy time for bees and wasps. What are they up to? Why yeah, is it so busy? It is. You know, as the flowers start to die as we get into the late summer, the wasps get more aggressive because they still need nectar, they still need food, but there's not as many flowers. So they go after your barbecue or into your beer can or your bottle yes. or something. And you pick it up and you get stung. It's That's not exactly good. That's exactly what happened to my husband. Yeah. Yeah, this is not good. No, no, it's really not, especially if you get stung in or around your mouth, it's not good. Okay. The good news is bees are not usually the problem. Bees, okay. so bees have a barbed stinger for the most part. Okay. And so when they sting you, their stinger rips off their body and they die. Oh, so, so just bees, one time. Just one time. And they're not motivated to bite you because they'll die or to sting you. But wasps don't have a barb stinger. They are quite motivated to sting you. And especially if they've been in your beer, they can actually get drunk and then get more aggressive, like a really? mob, yeah. Oh no, that's yeah. terrible. No, it's not good. That is not a good situation. And wasps really get aggressive, and they really, they're really they meat eaters, aren't they? They are meat eaters. So late in the summer, they actually become meat eaters as well, but just because they need the energy. So they oh. get super aggressive, they start stinging everybody. Ah. It's, it, it, and then, you know, have some of those people come in and see us in the urgent care or the emergency room. Okay. So, first off, I guess you want to try to tell the difference between a bee and a wasp sting. Is that right? Yeah, it doesn't matter too, too much because if you're deadly allergic, you're going to be deadly allergic to bee stings, wasp stings, and fire ant stings because oh. they're all part of the same species. Okay. But if you're not deadly allergic, then, yeah, it's kind of interesting to know if it was a bee or a wasp. And the best way to know is just look for a stinger. So if what you, does a stinger look like? It's a tiny, it's like a little tiny sliver that, oh. that sticks out of your your uh, your arm or wherever you got stung uh, but the thing is a lot of people want to grab it and pull it out right but if you grab it the end of the stinger often has a little tiny venom sac still attached to it Ew. and it'll keep pumping venom into you for a few seconds so if you can get it out that's great but if you pinch it to get it out you can actually inject more venom into you so you want to scrape it out with like the back of a knife or a credit card or something like that really so you want to scrape it out and get it out so that the venom doesn't just keep going oh gross yeah. But wasp stings, they sting you, they fly away. They might come back for, for seconds later. Oh. But, but when you get stung, one of three things is going to happen. Okay. You're either going to get a local reaction, which is no big deal. Think of like a mosquito bite or, or right. just not a very bad sting. You might get a large local reaction, which is a little bit more redness, a little bit more swelling, might be you know five or 10 centimeters across. Oh, and that can last that's significant. for, yeah, it's pretty big. So that can last for even 10 to 14 days and really? be quite, yeah, be quite um, problematic. Is it painful too? It's painful, it's more itchy than painful. Oh, okay. If a wasp sting starts to get painful and if you start to get a fever, then we wonder if it's actually infected. And oh. sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between an infected wasp sting or just a large local reaction. Okay, and, the and is reason, that one of those situations where you wanna get it checked out by the doctor? For sure, yeah, okay. for sure. And, and the other reason that people come in for large local reactions is that they're worried that their next sting might be an anaphylactic reaction, right? Like a deadly reaction. Right. So the good news is that only somewhere around one to three percent of people with large local reactions are actually going to go on to develop anaphylactic reactions. Oh, okay. So it's a relatively small number. Okay. But about one in ten, so about ten percent who have a large local reaction might have a worse large local reaction the next the time. The next time. Yeah. So. so what's going on there? Why does it seem to escalate? So your immune system has to learn that it wants to be allergic to something. So when oh. it sees the venom the very first time, you're not going to be deadly allergic because it's never seen the venom before. Okay. Right. So, but once it identifies the venom and says, "I don't like this," then sometimes some little switch flips and it says, "I'm going to go bonkers next time I get stung." Right. Right. And then you become anaphylactic to it. Okay. So be aware of that because, of course, we don't want to deal with anaphylaxis unless you've got your EpiPen, right? Uh, right. And the big anxiety these days is that there's a, there's a shortage of right. EpiPens. Right. We've talked right? about that on yeah. the show. Yeah. So one of the things that Health Canada has said is even if you have an expired EpiPen go ahead and use it. It's okay. better than nothing, but always, if you're going to use an EpiPen, always call 911 as well. As well. Because the Epi just buys you five to seven minutes of not having your airway close or your blood pressure tank. Wow. Okay, so keep that in mind for sure. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rush, thank you so much for being here. Great information as always. My pleasure.